There were certain things that we did right, but I think certain things we would have done much better. So unfortunately, with, with the circumstances that we had to go through, we were facing a tough election anyway. Globally, every government after COVID kept on changing. So we did not adapt, I would say. So I think we have got the message that we need to adapt. Welcome viewers. You all know that Sri Lanka parliament elections got over a few days before. The NPP registered landslide victory and they got two-third majority in parliament. On the other hand, last ruling party of Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka the SLPP, got very less votes than uh, rejected votes. What is happening? What is the reasons for that? Let's talk. We are with Mr. Namal Rajabakshay, National Organizer of SLPP. Hello, sir. Uh, as I mentioned in my opening, SLPP's vote share uh, fall drastically. What is the reasons behind that? I think uh, the challenges that we have faced within last four years, and to be honest, uh, the SLPP-led coalition uh, has been ruling Sri Lankan politics ever since 1994. So I would say our setup has become very old in, 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 in a different sense. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we believed uh, we had a golden opportunity in 2019, but unfortunately with COVID-19 COVID pandemic and the challenges that we were handed over by the previous government, um, there were certain things that we did right, but I think certain things we would have done much better. So unfortunately, with, with the circumstances that we had to go through, uh, we were facing a tough election anyway. So we were left with the challenge whether we are going on a coalition where the party would have ended up nowhere, or are we going to take ourselves and then build from where we stopped? So which we decided, you know, as a, as a party, we should go on our own for the presidential. And we faced, I would say, it was a tough election, but then the outcome was not as we expected. But then the parliamentary election, we have gained more votes than the presidential election. And everyone expected us to only get one seat from the nationalist. But then we managed to secure two seats other than the nationalist seat. And also, uh, we lost a couple of seats in different districts marginally. So which shows that there is a growth in the party as well. So this is politics, you know. We, we need to face these challenges and we need to restructure ourselves and move forward. Uh, I spoke with many of your party men. They said Mahinda's reign is known for growth. Even the common public said the same. They have done so much to Sri Lanka in past. But in present, you witnessed a huge downfall. Uh, what is the reasons and did you misjudge the people's pulse? I think more than that, that we have an upgraded ourselves. Uh, you know, the, the era my father, Honorable Mahindra Rajapaksa was ruling, that is before 2015. The circumstances are different. And then the pandemic came in in 2019, so the entire dimension was changed. And the needs and the demands and also the approach has changed in the public with social media going rapidly during that couple of period, you know, couple of years and then uh, the globally, every government after COVID kept on changing. So we did not adapt, I would say. So I think we have got the message that we need to adapt and move forward. Uh, and last 10 days, uh, I was in Sri Lanka. I spoke with many people in Colombo, in North, up country. Unanimously, they said, uh, we fed up with traditional politics. We lose hope on traditional politicians, we fed up with corruption charges and other things. So that we support AKD and he, he has he had huge support you know, across the country. How could you overcome this and how could you regain your hope on you and your party over this? I think firstly the challenge is on uh, the current NPP government. They need to prove the allegations. Uh, they need to implement law. But I must also reiterate that they should not use this power to victimize the opposition. So if they try to create fake cases, if they try to uh, fix evidence and try to victimize politically and then gain, gain mileage, then eventually people will realize the truth. But if there is honest corruption or downfall or bribery allegations or whatever it is, you know, do a proper investigation and make sure that you carry, you implement the law, number one. Then the public will understand whether we are lying or whether they are lying. So, it, so I think I think it is the hands of the current president uh, to prove the allegation that himself has built uh, for last so many years. And on the other hand, um, I think development-wise, you know, this government must carry out a rapid economic development plan, educational reforms. Because, to be honest, most of our educational reforms were on hold because of JVP-led uh, trade unions. 
So today the government uh, themselves, the president can make their own trade union sit and understand that the reforms need to be done. So likewise, you know, it, it is up to the government to perform on the one hand, on, the, on one side. But then on the other hand, I think as a party, yes, we will, we will restructure ourselves and we believe we are a progressive party and we represent the next generation. You know, we believe in uh, becoming a progressive partner in the global economy and that is our goal and that is our aim. And we have to be self-sufficient in agriculture. And um, at the same time, we should allow uh, the modern economy to take place in the country, modern transactions to be taken place in the country. So we will, you know, structure ourselves around that as a nationalist party, but we are not a racist party. And uh, we are not a racist party. I must reiterate that because sometimes nationalism seems to be taken as racism. Uh, but we are a nationalist party and we believe that Sri Lanka shouldn't be divided. And all cultures and religions and language should be protected. So we will, we will be an, a real true opposition for the government to make sure that the government is being uh, checked and it's balanced. Uh, the Sri Lankan government has to ensure good relationship with India, US and other countries. But JVP is known as a traditional Indian hackers. Uh, what do you think? Is it possible for them to maintain good rapport with India? If not, what will going to happen? Well, I mean, uh, I, I hope they will maintain a strong relationship with India and the neighborhood uh, because Prime Minister Modi's neighborhood first policy has benefited most of the countries. And we had seen that when the region tried to move out of it, uh, the countries have started facing a lot of challenges. So I hope uh, the current government will maintain that friendly, robust relationship uh, with, with India. And of, the, of course, with the rest of the world as well, uh, keeping their previous policies aside, you know, they should adapt. One last question, sir. Uh, you spoke a lot about Sri Lankan politics and Sri Lanka-Indian relations. I came from Tamil Nadu. In your answers, you said, we are not a racist party. But in our land, uh, you, the SLPP is known as a racist party. I want to take a message from you to Tamil Nadu. What is the takeaway message for Tamil Nadu? Well, I think the Tamil Nadu state has always misread Rajabaksa family uh, because we were never fighting against Tamils. We were fighting against LTT. And we have nothing against Tamils or Tamil Nadu. But unfortunately, certain lobby groups try to project that the that Rajapaksa family and SLPP is against Tamil Nadu. And that was went up to one, up, at one time, it went up to the extent of interpreting as Rajapaksa anti-Indian. So we are not, we are not anti-Indian or we are not anti-Tamil Nadu. And I believe Sri Lanka must maintain a strong relationship with India and Tamil Nadu. Because as you know, Tamil Nadu state probably will become a trillion dollar economy in the next couple of years. And the domestic traveling tourism is around 100 million, domestic and international. Uh, so Sri Lanka can benefit a lot. And also if you look at the energy exports, you know, Sri Lanka can become an energy hub. Where Sri Lanka can actually export energy to Tamil Nadu state and via from Tamil Nadu state to the rest of the India. So I think uh, we should rebuild our relationship with uh, the south part of India. And that is something that I think I have to do as my, from my side because as a new generation politician, and I'm open for it. And I, I invite the politicians in Tamil Nadu and the people in Tamil Nadu to understand the reality and, you know, you know don't believe what you see on social media. Uh, but get to know us, get to know us properly, then you will realize that, you know, we are not racist. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you.